two weeks' time, a vote will take place in Geneva, Switzerland, at the World Health Assembly. They're important because they're the governing body of the World Health Organization, WHO. This authority that they would be given would impact 99.4% of all the people in the world. There are 193 nations belonging to the UN. The Biden administration is bringing amendments that would propose that all nations of the earth cede their sovereignty over national health care decisions to the WHO, the World Health Organization. So what this would mean, Steve, is that the WHO would have decision-making authority to intervene into the United States government policy in any nation of the world without our permission. So, for instance, the lockdowns where you see 26 million people today locked down in Shanghai, China, they can't leave their apartments or homes, the WHO would have the authority to be able to impose that here in the United States for whatever pretext they want. They don't have to show data, they could do this. What this does, Steve, bottom line, is it creates a platform for global governance, global governance through the WHO. This is what people need to know. It's time sensitive. No one knew about this. The Biden administration gave these proposed, proposed amendments to the World Health Organization on January 18th. No one in America knew this until April 12th. Avocados dumped at the Atherton Green Waste Dump at the council. S truckloads and truckloads and truckloads gone to waste. Shocking. Circuses comes from an ancient Roman poet describing how the people are governed, not by excellence in public service, but by food and distractions, like a herd of livestock. Today's circuses can be found on Twitter, a reflection of the human herd's short attention span, meaningless distractions to keep everyone calm while their food supply is being destroyed. Destruction for years. In just a two year period, Stalin's communist government murdered over three million people in Ukraine by simply pulling the strings of bureaucracy, sanctions, the Ethiopian counterinsurgency burned crops and food stores, airily bombed food markets, and restricted trade. They then began a resettlement plan that killed at least 80,000 people. And this is exactly what is happening in America today. The Biden administration sanctions against Russia are only succeeding at killing more innocent people all over the world by dramatically cutting down the worldwide food supply. There is already a significant wheat, fuel, and fertilizer shortage, which is obviously going to affect everything else, starting with fresh produce and livestock. But in order to completely collapse the food economy, they'll have to start destroying food packing plants as well. 
so that there is nothing left on the shelves for you to eat. There have been confirmed over a dozen disabling accidents at food plants in the last month, over a dozen. Absolutely, and we're talking about some really significant plants. The Taylor Farms facility in Salinas, California, was completely destroyed by a fire last week. We've had two major potato processing plants in Belfast, Maine, and Warden, Washington, that were completely gutted, which is happening at a time where we already have a potato shortage globally. You were talking about the onion supply at that Rio Fresh, but it's not just produce plants. Last month, there was a fire that took out a Nestle uh, food plant out in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Arkansas, and that's impacting frozen food brands like Hot Pockets or Stouffer's, which maybe you might buy if you can't get fresh food from a warehouse that just exploded. Those still satiated with their bread and circuses are soon going to start getting hungry. And it's because America is under siege, being destroyed from within by a corrupt government, while the people seek fair.